Hey guys, my name's Thomas Busby and welcome at last to my guide on Fujifilm's best lens for wildlife photography. Now before we dive into this series, and it is going to be a series and this is just the introduction, there are a few things I really want to cover off and get across before we start. A lot of the information throughout this series is going to be very complicated, very very technical, but I promise you, as each episode goes we're going to dumb it down, we're going to simplify it, we're going to make it really understandable. So if you're having trouble keeping up as any particular episode starts, don't worry, it's going to get easier to understand. Next up, things are going to be very much focused on the zoom side of things. So for example with the 100 to 400, a lot of this series is going to be focused at 400 millimeters, not 100 millimeters. We're looking at zoom, photographing wildlife, and that higher end of every single lens that has a zoom is what this series is going to be focused on. But it's not just the best, we're also going to be sharing as much knowledge as possible so you can get the best possible results you can with whatever gear you currently already have. It's going to be pretty in depth, but before we start, before we get into the whole lot, let's look at our options. So first on the list is the 55 to 200 f3.5 to f4.8, then the 200 millimeter f2, the XC 50 to 230 Mark II f4.5 to 6.7. Definitely notice this is the Mark II, not the Mark I. You can tell because it's got little two marks versus one mark in the description of it. The Mark II is a heck of a lot better than the Mark I. The new 70 to 300 f4 to 5.6. The 100 to 400 f4.5 to 5.6, and the 50 to 140 f2.8. Now, do notice this lens is only part of the series because it is compatible with Fujifilm's 1.4 and 2x teleconverters. Speaking of which, I have both the 2x and the 1.4s. Now, there are two one that comes with the 200mm f2, and one which you can buy on its own. I'm not sure if there's a difference yet, but we're going to find that out. So once you consider all six of those lenses plus the Tully converters, and do be aware that the, the 50 to 230 and the 55 to 200 do not work with the Tully converters, that gives us 14 possible options, combinations, to work out what is the best one for wildlife photography. Now the first major step in finding out the best lens for you and understanding what we are dealing with here is to visually see the amount of zoom each one of the options can give you. So starting out widest to closest, here is a nice visual example of each option. As you can see, I've added the name to each of these options at the bottom of the screen here. So if you'd like to pause the video and skip back and forth between any of the options you're considering, please feel free to do so. Or all of these photos are also available to view on my website, which I'll leave a link for down in the description below, and a photograph from 10 meters away without moving the tripod. Each image was photographed in RAW at one thousandth of a second, F11, ISO 1600 with a basic sharpening and noise reduction replied. Not that you should be looking at any of the detailed differences just yet as these examples aren't as well controlled as a lab test but for now just compare the zoom differences. Now as I said earlier this is going to be a multi-part series and zoom isn't the only factor, far from the only factor we're going to consider. A few of these factors you don't need to hear me list off like price, weight, aperture, weather resistance, stabilizer but I promise you these factors will be considered. And a few factors like sharpness and autofocus speed are going to get their own little focused episode just because the information out there about those factors are either not available to find or really really complicated and do with a far better translation of how to understand and get the most out of your lenses. Now you may be thinking well clearly the 200mm f2 is just going to come out on top. But don't think I'm going to ignore the price and the weight of this lens. Those are definitely very big factors though also very subjective to each individual person. And things like say the 100-400 while it definitely has the most zoom, trying to shoot birds and flight and dark bush with a 2 times tele converter on when you're limited to f11 is going to make this kind of a non-viable option for some situations. We're going to be considering everything and really diving in to the complicated nitty gritty and trying to dumb it down, translate it, make it as simple as possible to work out what is the best. Now I say the best, but don't worry, this isn't going to end with one ultimate lens. Though I will give my personal opinion on what I feel is the most generic, best wildlife lens to use. But there's going to be a lot of information. We're going to find out what are the best lenses for any different type of wildlife situation and for different people at different budgets and different walks of life. If you would like to see more of this series, hit that subscribe button as next week we're diving, really deep diving into lens sharpness. I'm talking about the best parts of the lens to use and best apertures and how to get the most out of your lens ignoring a couple of obvious factors such as your skill, luck and light. If you'd like to support more what I'm doing here feel free to check out my website once again link down in the description below and you could possibly if you like buy prints to support more of what I'm doing here or just like share and subscribe but otherwise guys I'm excited it's finally starting and I'll catch you next week.